Hi, I'm Tim Evans with CrackyRacer.com. We're going to do a crack on this Subaru Impreza. Uh, it's about 13 or 14 inches long. We're going to use our 102 do-it-yourself kit. We want to go through the contents of the kit first. You have your Crack Eraser tool, your Tri Cup tool. It's a patent tool with design. Um, the suction cups have already come on there. You're going to have an injector. You're going to have an injector piston. You're going to have a crack expander, which we're not going to use on this method that we're doing, but, but you do use it sometimes. You have your two injector seals. We have two of the piston seals, and we have a drill bit. You've got your 20 chip resin. We've got your C crack resin. We've got cure tabs, a bullseye tapper and needle, your adjusting bolt for your tool, two little things of suction cup lubricant, a razor blade, a training DVD, and some gloves. This is pretty much everything you need. You can do about 30 or 40, maybe even 50 or 60 chip repairs with this, and uh, you could probably do 10 long cracks. So there's quite a bit of material. Just clean it up in rubbing alcohol when you're done. You can soak the O-rings even a little bit, maybe for, oh, 20, 30 minutes, and then just dry it off, put it in a dark place, and you can use the kit again. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill this crack. This one we're gonna have to, there's a little crack wying off. I don't know if you can see that. So we're probably gonna have to, or did that connect up now, Shay? Looks like it connected up. No, it's just slowly no, it? about. Oh, I see it. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop that one first. I'll try and get the angle so you can see it. Oh, I think that caused it to jump over there, Shay. Yeah, now it's connected up just from the drilling. There you pressure. go. Yeah, so I think that's all we need to do there. So we'll go ahead and stop this one. So we're gonna drill about two sixteenths in front of the crack. I mean, right at the tip, because in this method, we're gonna drill to the plastic. We're gonna drill two holes, so we don't have to use the crack expander, because we think this will be easier for some people, this method. While you're drilling on your windshield, you want to, if you're doing cracks, it's best to use a newer drill bit. It cuts easier, you don't have to use as much pressure. If the bit's old, you have to press down harder and you can cause the crack to spread doing that. As well as if you press too hard, you can sometimes bend the bit and then break it off inside and that can cause other complications. So you want to press real lightly while you're doing it and just let it cut down slowly. And then for the second drill, you're gonna go about an inch or so down from your first drill hole. So you're gonna get about an inch below it on the crack. We're gonna drill all the way to the plastic. Again. And on both of these, you're gonna be drilling to the plastic. And you'll be able to feel the difference as you go through the glass. It's hard, you can see the glass being shaved out. And then once you get to the plastic, it's real soft and goes pretty quick. So once you get to the plastic, you'll want to stop. And the plastic is soft. You'll you'll see it makes a little dimple when it goes through it too, and it's it's soft. But you you you'll, you can kind of tell that you've got into the plastic. And you could see this probably on the video that it changed. That's how I knew, and plus I could feel it. Just trying to get it to focus here. Here you can kind of see. Gloves on. Two together. Now we're going to put the tool together. First, we're going to put the O ring inject the uh, piston seal on, and we just kind of hook it over into the little groove. And with the injector seal, there isn't an up and a downside. You can put it in either way. It has kind of a little rib. You kind of put it at an angle and then you just work that little rib on the bottom in there. Once you get in there, it'll stay in there. Then we want to use a drop of resin on the piston seal 
before you stick it in the injector, otherwise it can stick and pull the O-ring off or the seal off. That. Then we're gonna just screw the injector in just till it's flush with the bottom, because we still gotta mount the tool and screw in the adjusting bolt till it's flush with the bottom. Since this is a crack, we're going to use quite a bit of grease because we're going to slide the tool, make a pathway for it to slide first thing. So we got to see which side we can go on. Which side do you think you'll be able to film better like this? Yeah, probably if there's room. Yeah, we can just barely make it work. We're going to suck it down and we're just going to keep it right over the crack. And we're going to turn the injector and the adjusting bolt down until it touches the glass. And then we're going to go just a little more on cracks. We don't need a lot of pressure. So maybe a turn or so. The rear could be slightly higher. We just need just enough pressure to, to get a seal onto the, the crack. Just in case if you couldn't hear, pre-grease your track, have everything backed off as you suck down the tool, and then adjust it to where you've got enough pressure uh, to keep it, keep a seal on there. And again, about a turn roughly is all you're gonna need using the injector and the adjusting bolt. Now we're gonna inject. If we were working, we would, we'll keep this cover with our hand. You gotta keep it shaded at this point a little bit we want you to see in the video also. We're gonna use about Five, uh, six drops of resin. Because this is a dry injector, it hasn't been used. We're going to do pressure, which is just turning the piston clockwise. You can see that O ring stand up. And then we're going to go back to vacuum and back to pressure. And I can already see it starting to go in. It's going to be a little tricky to get that angle. You have to look at cracks at an angle, so I'm looking at it about like this to see that it's filled. If you look direct on, you're still going to be able to see it. So everything is about the angles, whether you're, you're drilling cracks or you're working on chips. And I'm hoping that this will run, run down to the other impact point. If it doesn't, we can go to the other one and inject back, but I think it's going to. You can also put just a slight amount of pressure on the injector. You don't want to do much just to, to encourage it to go a little more. If you push too hard, you could cause it to spread. We've got about 10 minutes here, we're filming, and then we can take a look at yours. We have about 10 minutes here, we're filming a crack, and we gotta finish this crack before we can look at something else. But if you can wait a little bit, we'll get to you as quick as we can. That's just about down to the drill hole, hopefully you can see that mm -hmm. happening. Sometimes we use a crack spreader to spread. The crack at the tip of the crack is going to be tight and then it gets gappier and gappier as it goes to the edge. But using this two hole method will make it a little bit easier. Oh, we're going to have to add some resin probably. Make it a little bit easier for you. No, it's got a little bit in there. Okay. Now it's going to go fairly easy. You do lose your resin. The O-ring got pinched a little as I tried to slide it. Sometimes I lose the uh, injector seal just a little bit before I put on the glass, and then that helps it not want to stick like that. So now we're going to go to this part. That part's nice and full. Now we're going to see if this will take. Yeah, see it will. So we're getting down to the part of the crack where it's fairly gappy. Okay. Now here's the part where you've got to start adding that thicker resin since we're getting into the gap. So I find we can just slide it out of the way just a little bit and kind of going to keep this shaded. I let the piston pop all the way up, turned it counterclockwise till, so it doesn't push the O-ring out. I'm just letting that resin out. And we're going to turn this back down onto the glass. Slide it back in place. And then we're going to add the uh, crack resin, which is a much thicker chemical. We're going to need quite a bit of it, seven, eight drops. The injector only holds about ten. so. 
if you put too many in and you can't quite get the threads, you just hold pressure on it like I'm doing here now, because you're going to need that volume of resin. And then when it, a little bit more of it goes in, then we can contact the threads and start threading it in again. You have to be very careful that you're not disturbing the glass or anything as you're doing this. You don't want to flex the windshield, get in and out of the vehicle, shut doors, because that'll just put air back in what we've just done. As you can see, it is still filling, so... It's going to be really gappy down here, so you're going to have to keep adding resin and keep sliding the tool. And that's about as far as you're going to be able to see from see here. Video, yeah. Just as he was saying, it does get gappier as you get towards the edge, so if you got to keep adding resin, that's fine. Just go ahead and pull the inject or the piston out of the injector, fill it back up with some resin, keep on going. And again, just be careful not to disturb the vehicle, getting in and out of it opening and closing doors if you have to you're able to just try and do it as gently as possible but if you can get away without opening and closing things and rocking the vehicle try not to and you do want to try and cover it up and give yourself a little extra time for that resin to get a good bond to and the usually glass we would have covered it up right away but we want you to see in the video so we're doing things but normally you want to cover it up right away just for three or four minutes Make sure you don't lean on the car or push on the glass or anything. I'm going to take a quick look at his while we... And you don't have to wait very long, just a couple minutes. Let that get some time for the resin to bond to the glass. I'll be right back. Just a couple minutes. And then you'll want to also give it a right. couple I'm minutes to cure. cure and when you're going to take off your tool, you'll want to be real easy with it, not just yank it off like you can with a chip. You'll want to back the pressure off with the piston. So ease that off, and then you can loosen up the adjusting bolt in the injector and then use whether it's a razor blade or your tapper needle um, and, and ease the tool off. That works well. Okay. Okay. Using a razor blade to scrape off your excess grease works quite well. starting to cure some of it's still liquid but I'm just I'm not pushing hard on the glass so I'm not messing up what we've done it's going to take about five to ten minutes to totally completely cure you want to put a little of your thick resin and on your drill holes just to fill them in. But this method works pre pretty neat because you don't have to flex the crack or use the crack expander so I think this is going to be helpful to a lot of people. That's why we wanted to show this. I think this may become the preferred method. It's probably going to be the first one on the training DVD. With the drill sections, you can just scrape straight across and take off the excess. If you're doing a chip like that in the videos, you'll scrape around it and then scrape flush against it on the impact area. But drill sections, you can do just straight, straight across. The crack turned out quite nicely. Yeah, that came out really nice. Yeah, 
I'm very happy with that. So for more information, go to crackeraser.com or email us at info at crackeraser.com or give us a call at 719-331-5966. Good luck with your crack repair do-it-yourself projects. If we can help you in any way or you're starting to do a repair and you bought a kit from us, why give us a call and we'll walk you through it step by step. Again, I'm Tim Evans with crackeraser.com. Thank you.